For more on the dangers ships face going through this region and what's being done to combat piracy, I'm joined now by naval analyst Eric Wertheim. He's the author of Combat Fleets of the World. So, Eric, why is it so dangerous off the coast of West Africa for ships and their crews right now? Well, there's a lot of problems in the region because of there's so much oil and a lot of money, which invites uh, and a lot of unemployment, a lot of uh, ecological things going on with illegal fishing, and uh, there's just a tremendous amount of corruption, all types of things that lend to this uh, perfect storm for piracy. And we saw this off the Horn of Africa on the East Coast. We did. And has that piracy now shifted from the East Coast to the West Coast? Yes. It's, uh, it's not necessarily shifted in uh, as much as it's uh, gone down off the coast of the east coast of Africa as it's going up. So they're not necessarily connected except to say that when the solutions uh, that were applied to East Africa off the Horn of, uh, of Somalia are applied, so for instance, um, having navies operate in the area to uh, beef up their, their strength and patrols, being able to um, uh, help protect the ship's self-defense, things like armed guards. But do you think that could be done in West Africa too, just as it was in East Africa? Absolutely. There are different, of course, every uh, situation is going to be unique. We saw this uh, about 10 years ago in the Straits of Malacca, which was also a little of a different situation than off the Horn of Africa. And now we're seeing it off West Africa. And I think that some of the uh, same situations can be applied. But with all of the oil off the coast of West Africa now, is it possible that piracy is just the cost of doing business there? Well, I think you're always going to have piracy when there is a lot of money and corruption and these types of problems. Uh, but I think that we don't have to accept the situation. There really are answers, although the answers uh, are expensive and they involve a lot of manpower and a lot of naval uh, attention that a lot of countries may not be willing to, uh, to supply. And which countries in this case would need to commit to patrol the coast off West Africa? Well, you see that between uh, 30 and 40 percent of European and U.S. oil uh, goes through this region. So they would have to be a very big player in this area, and they're the ones with the finances and the navies to do it. Of course, as budgets go down, they have less and less ability to do that. But if those countries are having their oil stolen, isn't that a massive incentive for them to do something about it? Well, it's not so much necessarily that it affects them directly. What's happening now, though, is when you see these people being kidnapped, we're seeing that it is affecting uh, U.S. companies directly. Um, and so we're starting to see uh, that this is going to change. And that's exactly what happened off Somalia when American companies and European companies started being directly affected. And in the meantime, what can ships and their crews do to defend themselves? Well, uh, it's the, uh, among the things, for instance, would be putting barbed wire up, having guards, but guards are not allowed, armed guards are not right now allowed in that region. So that's one of the things that are going to be looked at. I'm sure uh, increasing the presence of naval ships is probably going to be the first things now that are going to be discussed. Eric Wertheim, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.